to see the world in a grain of sun and heaven in a wild flower to hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour this is the first four lines of a poem by William Blake called The Augries of Innocence. And uh, I find this poem very interesting because it's in those first four lines, it um, explores something that I think is very, very profound. It's, it, um, it, it describes the local, the subjective, the, the experience we have of being us. It talks about a grain of sand a wild flower, the palm of your hand, and a span of time, just an hour, right? All those are local to us, that's our lived experience, to use a phrase which is used a lot nowadays. Um, but also, it talks about four sort of um, huge, unfathomable, infinite ideas. It talks about the whole world, and by the world it means everything. Not the world as in earth, it means the world as in all material things. It then talks about heaven, right the heaven is the opposite to earth it's the imagination of perfection it is the thing that people are reaching up towards it then turns back talks about um infinity and i think specifically he means infinity in terms of size you know what is the limits of the universe how far does it go on and then he talks about eternity which is an infinity of time and he's putting those together and I think the point it's making is that those entities are contained within the finite, that the infinite is contained within the finite. Now, I've always found this a fascinating um, idea. Um, on this channel, I've talked a lot about science, which I believe is the, uh, the best way of establishing truth and art, which is the best way of establishing quality, which then um, rolls out into being about ethics and morality. So um, on this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to explore the infinite and the finite in terms of music. What is the limit of music? Um, I want to talk about its limits and also it, in the aspect where I feel it is unlimited. Um, so let's talk about limits first. Um, what you're watching and listening to is a piece of creative work, okay? Um, and it starts with a set of limits, and I'm going to describe what those limits are. Firstly, the first limit I've got is I'm going to talk about the first four lines of William Blake's poem, The Auguries of Innocence. I have no idea what I'm about to say. But I'm going to take that idea and I'm going to run with it. I'm also going to create a creative piece of music. So what you're hearing now is an improvised piece of music created by myself, which features drums, bass and guitar, um, actually fretless bass. The drum kit I'm using is a sort of adapted drum kit. It uh, has a 16 inch bass, which is very small. Uh, it then has two two snare drums and a tom and then a cymbal and a hi-hat. So that is in itself is limited. What I plan to do is once I finish this talk, I'm going to sit on the drums and I'm going to play along to what I'm saying. Now, you could say that I might react to what I'm saying, but I might actually not even listen to what I'm saying and just play. The, um, the, the coincidences that happen that drums and my voice could be just coincidences or it could be me empathetically playing along to what I say I don't know but the fact is the limit of this um, creative project means those two things will now be married together and anybody who watches and listens to this will not be able to not see those two things together once the drums are down I'm then going to add a bass line reacting to what the drums are doing and the voice. And then finally, I'm going to add a guitar part reacting to the bass and the drums. Although my plan is to, is to leave space at the start so the guitar you're hearing, which is probably what you're hearing now, um, is reacting to only the voice. So there's multi-layered reactions going on. 
Um, I'm trying on this video to discuss the idea of the limits of art and that how that relates to um, the finite and the infinite. Um, we are dealing with the um, area of ideas and concepts. Um, the music is dealing with something else. Um, the music is dealing with the ethereal, it's de dealing with the emotional and the visceral. Those two things together start to bring two entities together, the finite and the infinite, in exactly the same way as William Blake has done in his poem. Now, um, whether I am a genius artist like William Blake and this actually means anything, I absolutely don't care about, right? I have set my limits and I'm about to do that thing. When it's done, I will sit down and listen to it and I will be a judge of it and go, well, that worked quite like that and they didn't like that. Uh, but I'm not in control of that at the moment. At the moment I'm talking to you, I have no idea about what I'm about to say next and I'm riding the wave of the eternal now. I am in the moment, right? The moment we live in, this precise moment, this ever-changing eternal moment, that moment is both finite and infinite. The point of existence, the point where our subjectivity and objectivity comes together is the point of our experience right now, okay? And what you're hearing is me surfing on the wave of that with absolutely no idea what I'm about to say next. I find this fascinating. Of course, the instruments you are playing, again, I have no idea what I'm going to play next. As I'm talking to you, the music that you're hearing is actually existing in my future, right? Um, I have no idea of what you're hearing. Those two things have come together within the realm of art because art records experience. It takes that internal now and it freezes it in time, okay? Um, when somebody does this, when they make a piece of art, that experience in some way has been um, it has been stored, whether it's in written form, visual form, or oral form. And uh, if you then look into that, there's the possibility of being able to open that out like a grain of sand and see the whole world inside the grain of sand. Now, what do we mean like that? A grain of sand is an inconsequential thing. When you walk through over a beach, you are literally walking over a millions and millions of grains of sand. They, they seem commonplace, they seem valueless. But each one of those grains of sand is completely unique, like human beings. You could pick up one of those grains of sand and look at it up close, and that will be the only grain of sand in the whole universe that looks like that grain of sand. The sand has been formed over an infinite amount of time and it's also ended up in the position it sits in on the beach because of the forces of nature. That position of the sand on the beach exists because of a chain of events that goes right back to the beginning of the universe. When we look at that grain of sand, we could say to ourselves, has anybody ever picked this sand up before? Has anybody held this sand in the palm of their hand? As they hold the sand in the palm of their hand and they look at it, right? They have become aware of infinity, right? In infinity as in the time and space that has enabled that piece of sand to be there. But a chemist might look at the chemical construction of that sand. Right? And through that we'll be able to establish chemical actions that have, have um, created its existence on that beach. The physicists may want to explore the, the forces that have enabled that sand to end up on that beach. And artists may look at that piece of sand and they may see beauty in that sand. And they might want to try and translate the beauty of that grain of sand to be able to open that up. And like I said at the beginning of this, see the perhaps the correlation between sand on a beach and people in the world and of course stars in the universe because as we all know there are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand and the whole entirety of the world. This is an incredible idea that the limitless, the limitless is contained within the limited. 
music is a very specific art form. It is different to painting. It is different to literature. It is different to film. It has different attributes. And one of the limits of music is its ability to describe certain ex types of experience, but it is less able to describe other types of experience. Our hearing of all the senses is the super sense. The great musician Stevie Wonder, who of course is blind, does not take a camera on holiday with him, but he takes a microphone and a recorder. And when he visits a place he likes, he will record the audio of that experience. When we hold a photograph in our hand, the photograph is quite a limited recording of that experience. For somebody jumping out of an aeroplane on a parachute and then taking a photograph of their descent, when I look at that photo, I will not feel the experience of jumping out of the aeroplane. But somebody jumping out of the aeroplane and recording the sound in stereo and you place the headphones, you are placed in that emotional situation far more. Because our hearing is a super sense, because it goes over long distance, through walls, you know, um, round corners, right? We can hear things behind us, we can hear things to the side of us. It is not limited like our other senses. Feeling is limited to our, our own self. We can't feel something that's three miles away. Right? But we can hear, if it's loud enough, something three miles away. Our visual field is stereoscopic, but it's limited to where we are looking, and the actual focus is very specific. We cannot see through walls, we cannot see what's going on behind us. With sound, we can. And because our senses then impinge on our feelings and emotions so much, because our feelings and emotions are like a regulator of a response to our feelings, music has a very strong emotional content to it. Now, when I describe it like that, it seems like music is the greatest of the art forms. It's not, of course. What it is is the most emotional. It's the most moving of the art forms in a visceral, emotional sense. But within the arts, as I've said many times before, we have chaos and order. We have the finite and the infinite. And the thing that balances in art right the um, form of a piece and music is, is essentially formal is the content what it's about if we watch a film or read a book or see a painting it is very easy for those art forms to exhibit um, the actual reality of the world in terms of the story films books art all tell stories Stories are different to the visceral feeling and emotion. A story is something that we follow. And in that story, certain ideas are presented that we then think intellectually about. And the emotional feeling comes from res the response of us intellectually putting ourselves into the description that's been described. On this video, what I'm trying to do is marry two things together. I'm trying to marry something that has a lot of content, which is what I'm talking about, and I'm talking about all sorts of different subjects, and I'm trying to marry that with the formal, and the formal is the music that you are listening that has been created under a set of formal, limited rules. As you're listening to this, your intellect is being occupied by what I'm saying, but the emotional part of you is responding, I hope, to the music. I might just not be a very good music and it might not be happening but I have tried my best and that's all an artist can do. But if you're sat there, hopefully at certain points these things come together and what they do is they marry the finite with the infinite, they marry chaos with order, they marry the visceral with the intellectual and that pulls together, right? It pulls together our experience my experience of being in this moment now and actually being in four moments, because what you're hearing on top of each other is four moments. The same way as you watch a painter. A painter takes two hours to paint a picture. What you see is the experience of him looking and this, you 
know, seeing, um, looking, seeing, and deciphering over an hour. There is the time aspect of painting, the time aspect of the written word does exist, but it's not as strong as the time aspect of music, where music really does seem to, um, it seems to describe the eternal now. As I'm talking to you, your intellect has been occupied, hopefully, by what I'm saying. The emotional side has been occupied by what you're hearing. And I'm pulling those two things together, two things which are disparate in our normal experience. What we're doing here is I am making a recording of the now. And I'm hoping this is compelling because you intellectually are aware that I have no idea what is about to happen next. So as I'm talking, I'm going to leave in all the mistakes and all the stutters. And when I play the music, I'm going to let whatever happens happen. Because I'm trying to make a point that essentially this is the process in which art is made. And when it works right, that local, finite um, recording of the eternal power of experience opened up by the listener or the viewer and within that all the aspects of the infinite can be seen and heard and felt right art conveys the infinite within the finite and um, anybody who is compelled by the arts and this is the true value of the arts is that when somebody creates a piece of art it describes the local it describes their period of time, it describes the culture and history that they're in, but at the same time it describes things which relate to all humanity and actually relate to the whole history and um, action and purpose, if there is one, of everything. And we open ourselves up when we see that and when we experience that within a piece of art, we experience the sublime and the su sublime is the marriage of these two opposing ideas. That is what beauty is. And in that, our morals and ethics can be formed. That is the limit and the limitless of music. <laughs>